Here is everything you need to know about using drop-down lists in Excel. Stay tuned. In Excel, you can use drop-down lists, or what's also known as a data validation list, to select data from a predefined list of values and insert it into a cell. Let's start with a simple drop-down list and work our way up to more complex uses of this feature in Excel. You'll want to watch the entire video to see some really great tips and tricks that I bet you didn't already know. Number 1. Simple drop-down list. A drop-down list is helpful to use in Excel when you want people to select from a predetermined list. For example, we have this question here, will you attend? And we want the answer to be yes or no. We don't want them to select anything other than that. You can create a drop-down list with yes or no as the options by going to Data, click over here on this icon for Data Validation, and in the criteria, instead of letting them enter any value, we're going to let them choose from a list. The source of that is going to be yes or no, separated by a comma. That creates this little pull-down menu where they can select yes or no, and it fills it in the cell. If you try to type something else, it gives them an error and won't let them enter that data. Now let's say we're doing this for how many people and we want them to enter 1 through 5. We'll do the same thing. We'll select a list and we'll enter our choices 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. But this time, under the error alert, we're not going to stop them when they choose something outside of 1 through 5. So we're going to turn that checkbox off and hit OK. Now you can select from the list, but if you enter something outside of the numbers, it still lets them enter that data. Another option you have is to do multiple rows. So let's highlight this whole area and we want choices for all of these the same. We're going to come back in here. We're going to go to settings and create a list. And we'll say that they're going to pick A, B, or C. Hit OK. And you can see it makes those options available on every cell. If you want to clear data for validation, highlight the area you want to clear, come back into that list, choose this clear all, and hit OK. That gets rid of those data validations. And that's how a simple drop-down list works. Number two, drop-down list from a table. It's not always feasible to type in the data you want in a drop-down list, so you can choose data from a table. For example, let's say we're going to enter the month. We'll create a data table. And the source, we're going to select this range and hit OK. Now it brings up the list of all the months from that table. We'll do the same thing for your department. And that works the same way. The only problem is, what happens when we put in another department, like shipping? Notice it's not in the list. What we can do is change this entry so that the source is not just E1 to E5, let's select the entire column E. Now it adds shipping, and if we add another department, it adds that in as well. There's another method you can use for tables. If you just highlight a range, and you come up here and name it, we'll call this months, we can go back into this data validation and we can tell it to validate on months. And there you have your list. Number three, unique drop-down list. Sometimes you want to create a drop-down list, but the source of data has duplicates. In this case, we have a list of names and some of those names appear more than once in the list. You can use the unique function if you have a newer version of Excel, to get the unique values from that list, then you can create your data validation using the source of this new column, and your data is going to have just those unique values. Now one of the problems is, if I come down here and add another name to the list, it doesn't show up in my unique list. 
So what we want to do is use the unique values of the entire column D so that it expands as we add more lines. But you'll notice one little problem here. It adds this zero value so that when we go over here and pick from the list, it's got that zero in there as well. So one little trick that you can do to get rid of that is we can use the filter. I'm going to filter out values from column D where the values in column D are not blank. And then take the unique of that. That gets rid of the zero. And now our list is correct. To learn more about the unique and filter function, make sure to check out my Excel Dynamic Array Formulas video. I'll put a link into the description of this video. Number four, dependent drop-down list. Sometimes you want to create drop-down lists that are dependent on other drop-down lists. In order to do this, I've got an example here where I've taken the National Football League, which is broken down into two different conferences, the AFC and the NFC. And each one of those conferences is broken down into four different divisions. Within each of those divisions, there are four different teams. So we want to be able to select from a drop-down list the conference, division, and the teams and place them in this row. So the first one is fairly straightforward. We want to create a drop-down list and the values that we're going to select are going to be these two values right here. And you have your pull down with AFC and NFC. The next thing I've done is I've taken each one of those conferences, the AFC here and the NFC here, and I've taken these four entries within AFC and named them AFC because we can reference this name within a drop down data validation entry. So for the division, I'm going to create a data validation list where the source is going to be equals indirect of the value of this conference. Now the indirect function looks at the contents within this cell A2 and references it as a table name. And since we've named these four entries here AFC and these four NFC, it's going to pull that data in. So now when I hit the pull down menu, I'm going to see AFC East, North, South, and West. If I change this entry over here to NFC, this is going to show the NFC East, North, South, and West. Now we're going to do the same thing with the teams, and in order for that to work, I have named these different divisions with no space in here because the indirect naming of that table cannot contain any spaces. And so I've taken each one of these and I've named them AFC East, AFC North, South, and so on. So now I can reference with my list the source indirect for the value contained in this division. And you can see there are the four teams for the NFC East. Now the key to making this work is you have to make sure that you get the correct name for each of these different entries so that you can refer to it with the indirect function. And in doing so I could easily come in here, delete or add a name, and my new list is going to reflect those changes. That's how a dependent drop-down list works. Number five, searchable drop-down list. So the final type of drop-down list is one that's searchable. And that can be handy if we were to search for SA as an example in this list of names in column F. That should return Sally, Sandy, Samuel, and Sam. So let's put in a formula here and we'll do a search for the value that's in B1. And I'm going to make that an absolute value because that location will not change. And we're going to search for B1 in column F. When I hit enter, that's going to return the value 1 for Sally, Sandy, Samuel, and Sam. Those are the four targets that we are searching for. The remaining values here are just errors. So let's clean that up by putting this with an is number wrapped around that. That converts the data to true if it's valid for the search and false for everything else. 
Now that's useful because in column D, we're gonna create a filter. So now I'm gonna filter all the values in F where the values in E are true. Very simple. And that returns just the four names that we want from that list. Now I can create my list here with the source being column D. Now one trick that we need to remember here is I'm gonna go over to the error alert and turn this checkbox off. Because we're entering partial data here, we don't want it to give us an error. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see I've got my four names in the list. If I were to type in CL, it updates to the names with CL in them. I can even use things like the letter N, which is all over the place, and it shows all the names with N. So that's a quick method to do a searchable drop-down list. Just remember, you need to use these two formulas, and you're good to go. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.